This video is gonna be a little bit different than normal. I'm just gonna talk you through these six problems. Each one of these problems represents an attempt at using the direct comparison test to determine the convergence of a series. And we're supposed to decide whether or not this logic is correct or if it's flawed. For problem one, the first thing I would probably do is look at the result. The result of this problem is the series natural log of n over n diverges. So then I would ask, how are we trying to prove that? So over here, you can see an inequality. The natural log of n over n is greater than one over n. That is actually true because the numerator, natural log of n, is greater than 1 for all n values that are greater than 2. I have that down here in my list of fun facts. Okay, so that's a true statement. And the argument is that the term in our series is greater than a term in a series that diverges. It is true that the series 1 over n diverges. So this logic is actually sound. So I guess I'll write a C in the box to say we're finished with that one. Let's take a look at the next one. Again, I would look at the result. We're saying that the sum of the natural log of n over n squared converges. Since we're trying to argue that our sum converges, we should be making an argument that the term in our sum is less than something that converges. And it looks like that's what we're trying to do here. It may not be true that this inequality is a fact, so I'll walk you through it really quick. We can make an argument that the natural log of n is less than the square root of n for any integer n bigger than 1. That was my fun fact number two, so this inequality right here is true. Well, we can just simplify the right-hand side by saying the square root of n is the same as n to the one-half power. And then simplifying this right-hand side involves canceling a one-half power from the denominator. That's going to leave a three-halves power or a 1.5 power. So the inequality up here is actually true. And that series, 1 over n to the 1.5 power, does converge. That's a p-series with a p-value bigger than 1. So we've argued that the term in our series is less than that of a series that converges. Therefore, our series converges. That looks correct to me. For problem three, we're trying to make the argument that the sum one over n squared minus one converges. So if we're gonna use direct comparison for that, we need to say that the term in our series is less than some convergent series. It looks like that's what we're trying to do over here. However, this statement just isn't true. Notice that we're subtracting one from the denominator on the left-hand side. That makes this denominator smaller, meaning the whole left-hand side must be bigger than the right-hand side. So this inequality is not a true statement, therefore our argument is not gonna work here. Here. That is incorrect logic. There were a lot of ways this could have worked out. Something as simple as this minus one being a plus one would have fixed this whole problem. We could have made the same argument with a plus here and a plus here, and this would have been valid. But that didn't happen, so we're going to move on to the next problem. For problem four, our argument is that a certain series diverges. So if we're going to use a comparison to say that a series diverges, we need to be saying that this term inside of our series is bigger than the term inside of some divergent series. However, if you look at our inequality here, we're trying to make an argument that the term in our series is smaller than that of a divergent series. All we're doing by making this argument is saying that our series is smaller than some series that adds up to infinity. So our series is smaller than some infinite series, but smaller than infinity can mean a lot of things. So this logic is not gonna work out. What we really needed to be doing in this problem was making an argument that our series is greater than some series. So this is incorrect. For problem five, we're talking about an arc tangent of n over n cubed. We're going to try to argue that this series converges, so we need to be making an argument that this term is smaller than the term in some convergent series. To do that, we use this inequality here, which is actually true, and let me flesh this out for you. My last fun fact says that the arctangent of anything is less than pi over 2. A graph of the arctangent function looks something like this, and those asymptotes are at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. Okay, so knowing that fact, we can write an inequality that says the arctangent, that numerator, has to be less than pi over 2. Okay, well, just simplifying this right-hand side gives us that pi over 2n cubed. That means that this inequality is a true statement. Now, the series with this term does converge. It's a p-series with p equals 3. So we've done it. We've made an argument that our series is going to be smaller than a series that converges. Therefore, this logic is good and that is correct. For problem six, we're trying to make an argument that our series converges. So we should be saying that the term in our series is less than that of some convergent series. Okay, so it looks like we're trying to make that argument over here. And the question I guess I have about this is, is this a true statement? 
and that I don't think is easy to determine. What I might do to see if this is a true statement is I might multiply both sides by the two denominators. If we multiply both sides by n squared, we get an n cubed. And if we multiply both sides by n cubed minus 2, we're going to get a 2 n cubed minus 4 on the right hand side. And the question is, is that true for all n values bigger than 2? Well, it doesn't take much playing around to find that that is actually a true statement. Okay, so this inequality is true. Now, this series on the right side is a convergent series. That's a p series with p equals 2. So that converges. So we've successfully argued that our series should be less than a convergent series. Less than a finite number is another finite number. That means our series is convergent as well. And this logic is correct. Okay, that was a lot of direct comparison testing. For me, I probably would have used the limit comparison test on several of these problems. But we'll have plenty of time for that in future videos. In the meantime, I hope that this helped you out. And I hope to see you in the next video.